Okay, here's another one with the fourth power. That we're doing the same three parts again. So part A, where you're using the rational zero theorem. So first we'll start out with part A. We're writing the list of factors of four over the factors of one. So you're going to do that. The negative four, don't worry about that part because you're putting plus or minuses on your list here. So we're just going to write the numbers that uh, divide evenly into four. Plus or minus one, two, and four. Those are the numbers that divide evenly into four. You're dividing that by the factors of the first number that comes in front of the x to the fourth. So it's going to be one, two, and four over one. When you divide it, all the numbers on top divide by 1, you're just going to end up with the same list again. So you have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4. That's going to be all you're going to have for your list for part A. Now for part B, we're using the synthetic division to find the zero. So this is where you'd want to use a graphing program, or if you want to use trial and error, since this list is actually pretty small, we could actually do this one by trial and error. So therefore, you would start with, with the first one, I would start with 1, and I would do synthetic with that, 1, 4, 3, negative 4, and negative 4, those are our coefficients from the first one. We're going to do synthetic, we drop the 1 down, and you multiply, you get 1 here, 5, we get 5 here, 8, times 1 is 8 there, uh, 8 minus 4 is 4. If you multiply that, you get positive 4, you do get a 0 for the first one. So again, either by using a graphing program or trial and error, we figured out that one of our first numbers is going to be 1. Okay, so once we have that one complete, we don't want to stop there because we want to, take, we want to do synthetic one more time to drop it down into a, a square so that way we can use factoring to find the other zeros. Alright, so the next one I would want to try is may I would try 2 next. Or again, I can look at my graph and see where it actually crosses. I'll try 2 next. I'm going to use the answers I got for the previous one, 1, 5, 8, 4, and then I'm going to go ahead and go through this. If it really is a 0, I should get 0 as our, my remainder. So let's check that again. 1 comes down, I get 2 here, add that, you get 7. 7 times 2, 14. Add that together, 22 times 2 is 44. Now, what, what's, what happened on that? Well, it didn't necessarily make a mistake. What that means is that 2 is actually not going to be the correct 0. So maybe I read that value wrong off the graph, or if I'm doing it by trial and error, I found out that that number didn't work, so I'd want to try another one to see if it works. So this one is not going to work, so I'm going to go ahead and erase that one. 2 is not going to be one of your zeros. Well, let's try another one. Let's try, uh, you can try your negative 2 or negative 1. Let's start with negative 2 and see if that works. I'm going to put, again, the same numbers you had before, 1, 5, 8, and 4. And we're going to do synthetic here. Drop down the 1. This is negative 2. Add that together, it'll be uh, 3. You get negative 6 here. If you add that together, you get 2. 2 times negative 2 gives you negative 4. So yes. This one does work. You do get a remainder of zero. So again, whenever you do this, you need to get a remainder of zero. If you don't, that means you put the wrong number in and you gotta pick a different one to try. So I have this as a result. Now what does this mean? That means it took it down from a fourth power. It was down to a, uh, a third power here and now this will take it down to a square. So now I'm gonna take this part and if I put the coefficients in for it, I get this. I get x squared plus 3x plus 2. We, it's a square because we did synthetic twice. It brought the power from a 4 down to a 2. This is what you want. You want that power because that way you can do factoring techniques or quadratic in order to solve that. This one we can factor. So I get for this one x and x goes here and x is going to be uh, 1 and 2 left over and so I get this as my result. x plus 1, x plus 2 equals 0. If I set it equal to 0, I get negative 1 and I get negative 2. That answers the first part. But again, don't forget about these other ones that we found either by trial and error or by doing the graph. And you'll get 1 and negative 2 again. So notice I get the same number that's repeated. Now if you get, if you get something like that that happens where you have the number repeated, like that, you don't have to list it more than once. However, I'm going to keep it in this form because of my factoring. So let's take a look at part C. For factoring, let's suppose that we decided to get rid of that extra one and we just have all these. If I wrote my 
factored form out, what I would have is I would have these two, first of all, x plus 1 and x plus 2. And then I would have, uh, for that one, the last one would be with the 1 that I would have there, and I would have x minus 1. So if I just use the numbers off this list here, and I got that as my factored form. So again, I, you can always create a factor by taking x minus whatever the zero is. So we did that for all three of these. The problem with that is I've got three x's I'm multiplying together. I need to make it x to the fourth power. So actually, even though I had a repeated one, I had that negative two there before, that's actually pretty important uh, to keep that in there as far as factoring purposes goes. So now what I notice is there's actually gonna be another one another x plus 2 I'm going to have here. Again, I have x minus a negative 2, so I actually I'm going to have to have two of those in there. Or another way I can write that is I can do, I can do this, I can do x plus 1, and then I've got an x minus 1, and then x plus 2, what I'll do is I'll just put a square on that one, and I'll keep it in a squared form. Now, of course, you can write this in any order. You could, we could have put the square term first, then x plus 1, x minus 1, that's fine as well, but now it really would be a fourth power if I multiply that together. So this part that you see here would be the, uh, the most concise and factored answer. Now if you're writing your answers out as a list though, again, you don't have to put the last number there. You don't have to write negative two a second time, but again, it's, it's useful when you're factoring something like this.